Hello fellow problem solvers. So they're going to be doing a problem, the second part of our introduction to proof writing thing. So a bishop attacks every piece in the same diagonal. How many bishops can you put on eight times eight boards such that no two bishops attack each other? So if this was a bishop, a five times five board, you put it here, it would attack this, 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 and this square, right? So here I invite you, if you haven't watched the previous video, please watch it. This is supposed to be an introduction to proof writing. One lesson follows the next. And if you have, I invite you to pause and try this one for about at least five, you know, five to 15 minutes at the very minimum, ideally half an hour, not more than an hour and a half. If you want to go along with us, just pause for five, 10 minutes and try to see what, how do you do this on an eight times eight board? And there are a lot of principles here at play. One is okay, every diagonal. Now, eight seems difficult. You know, how do I construct it? Where do I put it? Do I put it in the middle or in the sides? What's the better place to put the bishop on? How do I put the bit? Where do I, you know, there's a lot of where's and what's and how do I and what do I do in this problem? So maybe instead of, so here's a general principle when you're trying to solve problems in, is, Instead of eight times eight, what about say a two times two board? Well, a two times two board, I can put, I can put two bishops, okay? I can put a bishop here and a bishop here, or here and here, and it's done. Now, how do I prove that I can only put two? Well, there are, how many, that there's this diagonal, and there's this diagonal. There are these two diagonals. You can put one bishop on each of those. These two diagonals cover all the four squares, so you can put two. Okay, sounds very reasonable. So now how about a three times three board, right? Now you might be thinking, wait a second, are we considering the eight times eight? Yes, we are, but to get an idea for what is good, what is bad, on the eight times eight board, we're trying to see if these smaller cases, three times three, you know, n times n, where n is some natural number, are going to be useful. So let's see, see for free. So if we put it here, then we can put one here, we can put one here, and then it's done. So we can put three, definitely. And if we put one here, then we're forced to put one here. So if we put one in the middle, it's sort of forcing us to put a one here. Is this the best? Well, there's this diagonal, but there's this diagonal, there's this diagonal. Ah, it seems there's a lot more diagonals than we can fit these bishops on. So maybe it's not going to be this. So let's see if we put it elsewhere. Say if we don't put it in the middle, but in the corner. Now we cannot put one here and we can't put a bishop here, right? These are no-goes. What about, okay, so I can put one here. Say I put a bishop here. Well, then I can't put one here nor here. And now, oh, so I can put a bishop here and it doesn't change anything, right? Yeah, it doesn't change anything. And now I can also put a bishop either here or here, but I can't put both, so I can put four. Okay, so we have four, can we put five? Hmm. Let's see how we started with the four. We started with the four by having first this one appear and then if we didn't have a bishop, say, here, we would need to have a bishop where, right? We could have a bishop. We can either have it here or here, but not both. So, and two of these don't affect each other, so it's going to be one of these. And then no matter which, if we pick this side, we'll be able to put another one here. If we pick this bishop, we'll be able to put another one here. So it seems like there's four. There's a lot of case-by-case -case analysis here. So this doesn't seem to be very generalizable to our other case. So how can we maybe prove, is, what can we look at is the question here to sort of state. And we need to look something with regards to the diagonals here. So let's see, when you put these bishops, say you put bishops here, there's this diagonal, there's this diagonal, and that's two. And now there's these two diagonals. Okay, so now we've had one, two, three, four diagonals. They cover all the squares. 
So that means you can have at most four bishops. And we've had a construction with four. This proves it for free. Because we had a construction with four, so it says it's at least four. And we say this diagonal, this diagonal, this one, and this one can each have at most one bishop. They cover all the squares. And so you can have at most four bishops. Now, what about a four times four board? That's going to be, seems a bit more complex, maybe. So here's where I invite you, if you haven't, pause for 10 minutes, play with the four times four, and then if you succeed with the four times four, pause for another 10 minutes and try to generalize to an eight times eight. This is how you solve these problems. So here's the four times four. What do we have? We have, well, let's try to copy something here. We're, we're putting the bishops on the sides. And when we do that, so we can do like a bishop here, a bishop here, a bishop here, a bishop here, and a bishop here, and a bishop here, right? Then everything is covered. So what is doing the covering? Well, there's this diagonal, this diagonal, this one, this one, and these six diagonals cover all the squares so there can be at most six bishops right because every single one of these diagonals can have at most one bishop on them there are six diag they cover all, all the squares so there can be at most six bishops on the four times four and now we can do a similar thing here we can sort of draw this and we can say okay let's put a bishop here 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 this is going to be our construction we just like put the bishops on the sides like this then we say there's a diagonal that goes from here to here a diagonal which goes from here to here and a diagonal which goes from from this place to this place and then again from this place to this place from this place to this place this place to this place this place to this place a diagonal that goes from here to here a diagonal which goes from here all the way till do -do 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 -do, here actually no we do not want that we want to want to go from here to here from here to here to cover all the squares from here to here from here to here, from here to here, from here to here, and here to here. And these diagonals, there are how many? There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14 diagonals. They cover all the squares. I don't want to draw it right now because it would really mess up my picture. And But they cover all the squares. And so they can ha you can have at most 14 bishops because no two bishops are on the same diagonal. And this means that the number is at most 14. Here's a construction 14, so the answer is 14. Now, this is one way of going about it. Another way of going about it, maybe a more clear reasoning, because this seems a bit like, like, why are we constructing this? But we can say, let's look at all the diagonals that go from the bottom, the bottom left to the top right. There is one, two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen of those diagonals they cover all the squares i mean they're all the diagonals so they cover all the squares so there can be at most 15 bishops but, but wait we said 14. well if there were and we say if there were 15 then there would have to be a bishop on every single one of these diagonals but then there would have to be a bishop here and here, those two would attack each other. So, you have these 15, but these two cannot have this, the same bishop on them. Cannot both have a bishop on them. So, there's at most 14 bishops. And that is another way of proving this. Now, let's do this with the knights. So, the knight now. Well, what do we have? A knight attacks like this. If a knight is here, then it attacks this, 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 and this square. It's like an L shape that it can take. And how many can we put on an 8 times 8 board such that no two attack each other? 
And I like this as well. This problem I like for a different reason is because you can get something that, shall I say, the small cases can get you the wrong way. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Invite you, I invite you to pause for 10 minutes, try it out at two, three, four. See if you get anything from there. And what do I get from two? So from two, I can just put a knight everywhere. Like I can put a knight, 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 I can put four knights, yay. Now for free, if I try to do a knight, 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 I can put four, right? So now let's think about it being a bit more strategic. If I put one in the middle, it's not attacking any other square, so I should put it in the middle. Now every other knight, if I put a knight here, it attacks these two squares, right? If I put a knight here, it attacks these two squares, this one and this one. So I can either go ahead and put a knight here. Let's see if I put a knight here. I put a knight here, then I can't put one in this diagonal right here in this L shape. I cannot put one here nor here. And if I cannot put one here, I might as well put another knight here, but then I can't put one here. So I can put five knights like this. Alternatively, I can also do five knights instead of putting them here, I can put them here. It's the same thing, but I get a five. Can I get a six in any way, shape or form? And the thing is, well, let's see, what would it mean for me to get a six? Okay, so I can, outside of this one that I can get five. Now outside of this one, I get four knights. I can perhaps pair them up. This one pairs up with this one. I can put a knight here or here. I can put a knight here or here. And then that gives me three pairs where I can put one knight on each one of those. And of the remaining three squares, if I was to have six, I would need to have a knight here, here, and here. But then I couldn't have a knight here, so I would need to have a knight here. And then I also couldn't have a knight here, I would need to have one here. So that resolves these pairs, but then if I had one, I can't actually have one either here or here actually let me just double check this let me let me write this nicely okay so i've written this nicely now these are paired up and if i was to have a knight on this one this one and this one that would be six knights i would have because i have a knight here that means i couldn't have a knight here so i would have one here but then i couldn't have a knight both here because of this knight and here because of this knight right here. And that gives me a, that gives me, I cannot have six. It's sort of a case by case analysis at this point. Now, what about four? Well, I can't now use the middle in any way, shape or form. So I need to think in another way. Let's see what has happened. Like how has this plus or this X been, has it been interesting in any way? Is there something holding for it? Like here, can I make a plus? A knight, a knight, a knight. Uh, no, I cannot make a plus. I can't make a giant plus because now everything is taken. So let's see if there's anything else we can do. Can I make an X? So if I make an X here, knight, 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 knight. Well, now these are taken. And so, so this is taken, 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 taken. This is taken because of these two knights. This is taken. So is this and this. And these are free and I can put them in here. And that gives me eight knights, four, five, eight. It gives me eight knights for four. And I put them here. I could also put them on the circles is what I see. So how many knights can I put on an eight times eight chessboard? Are you getting any sort of intuition for what that might be? Right, I'm sort of building up using trying different things. You know, this sort of plus this situation did not work well. Could I put if I put a plus if I put this thing in here, I couldn't put knights over here and also in these these places, and then I could put knights. Actually, I couldn't put even them. I couldn't put them anywhere except here. Then, so that would be sort of a messy situation too. So it seems like eight. Is good here. Now, why can't we put nine is the question. And can I do any sort of pairings? And I invite you to pause for five, 10 minutes, see if you can pair anything up. And here's a pairing 
I can pair this one is a one, this is a two, pair them up like three, three, four, four. And then I do one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four. And I just do the same thing over here. And I have paired up them. I paired these squares up. Every single one of these squares can have at most one knight. There are eight pairings. So like every pairing can have at most one knight on it. There are eight of these pairings. They cover all the squares. So we can have at most eight knights and we've showed we can put eight. Now, can we translate that here? And the answer is yes. And here's why I like the problem. At the beginning, you see at a four, at a two, you see, oh, I can put everything. And you might think, and on a, and here you can put five and then eight. If you try a five times five, you will be able to put them on the five times five diagonal. You'll be able to put one here, 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 and here, and here. That is six plus six plus two, eight, that is 13, right? It doesn't, you can get an idea. The odds and evens mess things up here a bit, right? They're not the same sort of number. They're not, it's not a clean number with respect to what N is, especially two. Two really can mess you up in the beginning. But then you look at four is where you can see you can get a general idea that you can apply here. And what do you do here? Well, you can put 32 and put them all on the, you, you can say color this like a chessboard with white and black squares, put the knights on the black squares. And now what happens is that every knight, every knight on a black square only attacks the squares which are white when you color it as a chessboard. And this is a idea to look at things which remain the same for all knights. And because all of them are on the white chessboard, on the white boards, there are 32 white boards, we can put 32 knights. And because they're all on the white ones, no two knights that are on white, no, two, a knight on the white square only attacks knights, only attacks the black squares. Here, not all the black squares, it doesn't attack this one, or this one, this one, or this one. But it attacks black squares only. So we can put them like that, and we'll be done. Now we just need to pair them up. And here's where it's useful to look at four times four. We can really just translate this pairing on every single one of these places. So it will be one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four. And then we move this up here, 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 here. And we have 32 pairings. And this shows that you can have the pairings cover all the squares of the board. In every pair of squares, you can have an, a knight at in most one of those pairs. And because you have 64 squares, 32 pairs, you can have at most 32 knights, and we have a construction. And this is suddenly teaching you a idea of pairing things up in problems. To prove like you cannot have something bigger than something else, somewhat an idea that's sometimes used is pairing things up. Odds and evens, black and white squares, it's a somewhat common thing that's used. Not super common. Again, depends on the problem, but it's a cool idea to know. This finishes up our problem, and as always, thanks for problem solving.